Hey everybody, I'm Jordan with PDQ. Uh, we're back with another Patch Tuesday, the first Patch Tuesday of spring, and uh, it's not good. It's not good. We've had worse, but uh, we'll break it down real quick. I have the blog actually published this time. We have a total exploits patch, 97. That's quite high. We're hitting the, we used to hit standard three digits, and we're headed back in that range. Uh, critical patches, that is seven, not nine. I proofread this like a minute ago when I, uh, I said the okay, and I gave bad information. Uh, with one of those already exploited. Uh, that's not great. It's not bad. One thing that is improved, last month we had four or five that were 9.8 uh, on the severity, which is about as bad as you can get without it being wormable. Uh, this time we have two that are 9.8. Uh, and so we're going to do a quick dive into the low lights, and we'll see exactly uh, what those ones look like. So I'm actually going to cover both 9.8s at the same time. Uh, they hit different services, but the way you track it down is the exact same. So I'm just going to kind of uh, just give it a quick rundown. So the first one right here is the remote execution code for the Microsoft messaging queue. Uh, this is network accessible, doesn't require any user input, has low complexity. Basically, everything an attacker needs is just right there and available. One thing that is nice is it uses the MSM queue. Microsoft Messaging Queue, which is not enabled by default. So if you haven't enabled that, you're protected. If you have, you've got some risk on that one. Uh, and the reason I said the second one is similar is it's also 9.8. It, it attacks the Windows Pragmatic General Multicast, but it looks at the exact same service. So for both of the 9.8s, it comes down to a single service. Is it running? Uh, if it is, you're at risk. If not, you're fine. Uh, so there's two ways you can test this. Uh, you can do my preferred method. PowerShell, as they're right here, get service MSMQ, and then select status. I have that one there because I'm going to show an inventory where you can track that down. The other method, method is you can have your network guys look to see if the computers are listening on TC port 1801. I'm not sure what goes into that. I'm not a network guy. Uh, they do some sort of magic, and they'll let you know. So depending on which one's easier for you, either one of those you can track down as long as you can close that up. The worst of it is not viewable uh, or not at risk. A quick way you can test that is I'm going to use inventory, but anything you can use to run PowerShell against your machines would be fine here. Uh, don't tell them I tell you that. I work for PDQ. So, I mean, this is probably the only product that works. I'd, I'd definitely take a look at this one. We're just going to come in and build a new PowerShell scanner. Uh, we'll call it the 9.8s. You might want to name it better. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. Uh, we're going to add a PowerShell scanner to this one. And I'm going to go back to my blog and copy that real quick. Paste that in there. I mean, technically, it'd be better if I had a file, but I'm, I'm living dangerously. We're going to name this one A just because when I do the filtering on this later, I don't want to go tracking it down. All right, so now that we have that built, we're going to go ahead and run this against all of our machines. We've got 47 in here, so we're going to scan the collection with the nine point, apparently nines instead of 9.8s. False advertising right there. Uh, while that's running, all it's gonna do is just gonna go to the machine and say, hey, is this service running? If it's not running, either it's not installed at all, uh, in which case the error action silently continue will just ignore, but it won't return any results. Or if it's set to stopped or disabled, it won't grab that. We're just gonna go look for the ones that are running. It's pretty quick where it's a single power show. Uh, now that we have that, we just need to build a quick collection so we can see those. Uh, dynamic collection. Come in here to PowerShell. That's why I named it A right there on top. And we want to make sure the status equals running. Hit OK on that one. And that is going to pull in every single machine that has that one. So if anything pulls up in this collection, that is a machine that is at risk for a network attack that requires no user interaction. As you can see, we have one machine here. Yes, I did enable this just so I can show it in the example. Uh, if you're watching this, Rachel, too late, it's been done. It's been done and it's been undone, pending, pending reboot. Uh, the, the last one we're going to cover, this one is a 7.8. Normally, we wouldn't cover one that's rated this low, but this one is already uh, out there in the wild, and it uses the Windows Common Log file system and allows someone to elevate privileges to get system to the machine. The reason it's a 7.8 is because it does have a local attack vector, which makes it a little bit less likely to be used. But where it has already been exploited, it's known about, it's one you definitely want to take a look at. 
uh, that's that's pretty much everything for this patch Tuesday. The high number, the two that were really bad, you can track with one solution, which is always kind of nice. And I mean, that, that's pretty much it. Patching doesn't change. If you have it automated, that's great. PDQ and deploy and inventory are great for that. If you're looking to do a little bit deeper dive into both reporting or control what you do in your updates, we have a webcast from last week, a link in the blog there, that will kind of break down how you can do that with all, all the reporting. And that's pretty much everything for past Tuesday in April. Uh, for PDQ, I'm Jordan.